Welcome to another Fusion 360 tutorial. Today, we're going to be taking a 2D image and turn it into a 3D object. We're going to be using SVGs to assist us, and then we're going to use an SVG to apply an image to that object as well. Let's go. We're going to jump right into a new sketch up here, and we're just going to go to the front. We're going to say we want to make this around 50 millimeters, so we're going to go 50 cap 50, and we're going to turn this into a constraint. If you're wondering where I got the 50 from, I actually just measured the one that I had, and it was around 50, but you can pick however big you want to make this, just keep in mind your build plate size. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go insert SVG from computer, and here's my SVG. Now, SVGs you can find all over the internet, you can find them for free, you can pay for them, it's your choice. They work very good, usually, if you get them from a great source and it stops you or it helps because you don't have to trace it. We're going to go ahead and flip this. And if you drag this little handle here, you can scale this. Now, I think this is about a decent size for us. And we're going to go ahead and hit OK. Now we want to do a couple of things here. We want to find the center. And in order to do that, we are going to just draw a line right here. And we're going to go to that exact same point. And the reason I'm doing this and not just connecting those two points is because you can see it's kind of crooked. So we kind of want to find the... Uh, a better center line which would be right here and that's going to be our revolve axis because that's what we're going to do we're just going to revolve it now if you wanted to at this point just break this line by using trim if you want to at this point you can hit revolve you can just select that select the axis that's your axis and there you go that's what your cauldron would look like uh you would actually delete the feet from the sketch and redo it and the handles as well because as you can see it looks kind of funny <laughs> but this is not what we're going to do we're going to change ours because we want ours to print without supports so we're going to take away the feet and we can do that by using the spline we're just going to click that curve right click and hit okay and the same thing here we're going to use that spline tool and to go right here and we're just going to go down to that point right there once you hit okay you can always go to your spline and you can adjust it afterward for example you can pull this in or pull that out maybe a little curve like that looks a little bit better and maybe if that started up there all right now we're good but i want to show you one more thing enable that sketch i'm going to go hit revolve see now the legs and the handle is cut away i'm going to select our axis and there we go let's see all these segmented pieces we want to try and get rid of them because they're going to cause issues down the line um usually with processing if you want to do like a shell command which we're going to do next and i can actually show you i'm going to hit shell this what this does is it hollows out our inside and we select by how much so we go two millimeter if we go three, we get an error. That's because this topology is too complicated and it's probably gonna cause some errors. So what we wanna do is we wanna get rid of all these little lines and they're not gonna show up in your print. So at this point, if two millimeter work for your wall thickness, you could just use that. We're gonna go ahead and delete this. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make another sketch on that same plane. And now we are just going to trace it. We need a starting point, so we're going to hit P for project. I project that, that, just so we have our points right there. And then we're going to use the spline tool. And we are just going to trace this a little bit freehand like that. And then in the end, we should end up with a nice, smooth surface of one with all those breaks. Hit and OK. And then we're just going to use this, draw a line up here there all right now we're gonna say finish and then we're gonna disable that sketch we'll make it invisible now we're gonna hit re re revolve we're gonna make sure that we select the right one we're gonna go axis and there we go look at that smooth as butter all right and you can kind of see there's a little bit of a little bit of a hump right here so you can actually the cool thing is you can go back into the sketch and you can adjust this let's say i want it to look like that look at that so you can just keep going back and adjusting this every which way you want to make it smooth as you would like but i'm just going to keep it the way it is and hit finish now the next thing we want to do is we want to create a lid for this now we can actually just use this object create a lid actually first let's do the shelf so we're going to hit shell we're going to go two millimeters i think is good and see now when we go three millimeters or four millimeters there's no issue because you get a nice smooth apology i think two millimeters should be good so we're going to go inside but as you can see it doesn't look like it did anything but if you go to inspect section analysis and we click on this plane you can actually see that it's hollow on the inside just like we want next we want to draw the lid 
So what we're going to do is we're going to make an offset plane using the plane down here. And we're going to use this as a cutting feature. It's going to assist us in cutting this lid. Now we get to pick where we want our lid. So we're going to go I'm going to put our lid right here. I hit OK. So next, we're going to go to split body. We're going to select this body. Our splitting tool is our plane. And once I hit OK, you can see there's two bodies and there's our lid. We can just hide that construction plane. We've got our lid right here. Next, we need to make the lid look more like a lid. I renamed this cauldron and lid. We're going to hide the cauldron and we can use a fillet. But if we use a fillet, see what happens after a while. It does something really funny there, but this is kind of the shape we want. So we just need to increase the height a little so for that you can select this face you can use press q which is going to offset this face and let's go five millimeter here you're going to have to experiment a little bit because there's no formula saying oh it needs to be five millimeters but here you can draw it right up to like this point for example and that is basically what a cauldron lid looks like right there you go now one little thing because we want to print this as support free so all we're going to do is we are just going to make a sketch we can we can try offset face again and drag this down that might work yeah there we go that actually worked perfect just to so we have a flat surface we're going to print next we want to put a handle on so we're going to make another sketch this is the center so we could just go off of that plane we're going to go up here and we can hit p for project so we can kind of get a little bit of a curve here and we can extend that curve by just doing a three-point arc just so we have a a line of reference go and now we can draw in our handle we get to pick how big we want it i'm gonna say let's just go somewhere here and we're just gonna curve our handle like that all right now we do want to hit s and then we go extend and we're just gonna extend this a little bit like that i draw a line here i'm gonna trim the and i'll show you why because we are gonna draw a circle on this line and we're gonna use revolve and sometimes it just doesn't line up Right, right so you just want to you want that path to go a little bit into your design i'm gonna hit k now we're gonna construct my favorite this is probably my favorite plane out of all of them it's playing along path you can do so many things with this so we're gonna go right up here so you can move this anywhere it doesn't really matter it might just make your brain not hurt if you're working at a really weird angle so i'm just gonna keep it up here now i can hit sketch i'm gonna draw on this plane it always takes us back to the center point if you double click your middle mouse button you zoom out so you can see your entire design design now that was our center point right there i'm going to hit project and right here i'm just going to make a circle and i'm going to say let's make this handle 1.2 millimeter hit okay and there's our circle now we can go ahead and say sweet we're going to select that and then we can select our path and it's going to want to cut but we're just going to change it to join and look at that there is your handle for your lid now the cool thing is you can go back in here and you can change this to let's say three millimeters now you have a nice big beefy hand let's actually keep it like that be weird all right now that we've got our lid for our cauldron next thing we're going to do is we are going to draw the handle and then the hole and then we'll do the svg image last for the handle we are we need that we're going to do the same principle we need to draw a path and then we're going to draw a circle on that path and we're just going to sweep it so what we're going to do is we're going to start with a sketch again now this nice thing is that because we started on this plane we have this plane to work off and it's going to give us our center so our handle is going to be exactly in the center we're going to use project and a little trick here i'm going to hit control and seven so so now you can actually see the inside and you can see where your wall is the reason for this is we're going to start our handle right here we want to keep in mind that we need like a 30 to 60 degree angle for a 3d printer to print without supports so you're not going to make your handle like this then you need supports instead what we're going to do is we're going to start right here and we're just going to go up and we're going to make like a little curve like that and this angle might be a bit extreme here so what we can do is we can lower this and lower this a little bit and see how nice you can just adjust this curve right here we can make that go out a little bit yeah that should be okay. that might be a little bit tough there but we'll see i think it's going to lift it up all right now you can just hit Control six again and you're back to your normal view we're going to use Plane along path again and draw it from anywhere. Hit OK. Make a sketch on that plane and we're going to project 
that line right here that's our center point and let's go with 2.5 make it nice and deep and there is our circle as you can see it, it could be a little bit disorientating to see where you're actually drawing when you use the plane along half but with practice it gets a lot easier now we're gonna go to create we're gonna go sweep we're gonna select that path again see it wants to naturally cut but we're gonna tell it to join instead and there we go now let's take the lid off and just make sure we didn't go on the inside hey why is there hmm. so i just noticed when i took the lid off that we uh, actually didn't cut deep enough here when we use this plane to cut so what we can do is we can just move this plane we're just gonna go let's say 52.5 instead so we're basically just lowering it by half a millimeter and look at that now we have an opening and everything should have adjusted accordingly to that movement that's the cool thing about drawing with your design history all right next thing is we're just going to make a little hole for this we're going to use an offset plane we are going to offset it just so we're outside of the view outside of the edge right here i'm going to make a sketch on that and you can just make your hole anywhere you want i'm just going to make mine right down here let's go with a 3.5 and hit finish we're going to hit e for extrude and click on that sketch and you can just drag it all the way through you could say start on object start on object that and then you can drag it in and for your distance you could actually hit object as well and we could hit that what that does is now if this object ever changes that hole is always gonna start on the in outside surface and end on the inside so we got our lid we put in a hole there for a keychain one important thing is keep in mind where you put this hole if you're gonna use a tiny keychain or key ring then don't put the hole down here. Just measure your key ring and make sure that you're at least moving half of that this to the top there. Next, we're gonna put on that SVG. We're gonna make another plane here and let's use this plane. We're gonna move it out here. Anywhere, as long as it clears this edge is perfectly fine. Just don't go put it like 5,000 millimeters or five kilometers in that direction. Probably break your computer. Right, so we're gonna go sketch on that plane. Here, we're gonna go insert svg again and i'm gonna select that svg i already have it here i'm gonna scale it up a little bit actually scale it down and it's surprisingly the right side up now i'm gonna scale it nice and big around here and you can basically put it wherever you want. we're gonna hit okay and there is our svg now all we have left to do is we're gonna say we can either use in extrude or emboss at this point let's give them both a try let's start with extrude we're gonna hit e and we are going to select all of the pieces that we want to extrude now this is where you just kind of have to keep in mind that you don't click the wrong things and you use that by looking at the go and we're going to say start it's going to be the object we're going to hit that and then what we're going to do is the arrow is in the right direction and let's say we go 1.2 millimeter you're just going to wait a second because this might as you can see the computer is not responding but uh yeah there we go and we're just gonna hit okay so the reason i did 1.2 millimeters is because i found that 1.2 millimeters is very easily uh printable on most printers you can get away on 1.2 millimeters with an overhang without any support so 0 0.8 is actually better 1.2 is kind of the max but i would also suggest you test this out now the second method we can do this is uh oh one other cool tip here actually so you can see that this is all because we had new body checked now this is all a different color so you can actually go ahead select them all and let's say you want to make this blue and when you export the 3mf these are going to show up and then you can just select them in your slicer and assign a different color to them if you have a multi-color print all right let's go we're going to go back here we're going to delete this and then re-enable this sketch now we're going to use emboss let's try the emboss feature you find it under create and you go to emboss and you can do the same thing you'll select all of the pieces that you want to emboss on on your uh Cauldron. Now the cool thing is with embosses, uh, I think it's a little bit more user-friendly. You select the faces right here and yeah, kind of emboss feature. So 
sometimes emboss doesn't like complicated features so we're just gonna stick with extrude all right i redid it using the extrude i went 0 0.8 millimeters just to be on the safe side i'm gonna hide this sketch and we are done it does look a little bit different than this one just because this cauldron was based off a different image but on all the shoot print fairly okay one last thing we need to do is we need to make the bottom a little bit flatter and the way we can do that is by making another plane i'm gonna go to the front here and actually we should make it and then i'm gonna use this little method here we're gonna go hit control seven and I think this should be okay if we draw a line like this. We're just going to cut off that little piece right go six. We're going to go modify, split body, select this body, and we're going to use that line as a target. But that's going to chop that bottom off. And there we go. Now we have a flat bottom and we can just click that and hit V and that's going to hide. Now the last step is to export this and we're going to use bamboo slicer for slicing it. First, I want to just select all of these again. I'm going to name them, let's say blue, for example, and this is the cauldron. That's the lid. See, everything you don't want, you have unselected. Save. I'm going to go export, and I like 3MFs, but you can always go to SDL, but that just means it'll combine it into one file, and you won't be able to do multicolor. So 3MF is better. So we're going to go cauldron. We're going to hit export. Here, I just dropped it into bamboo slicer. And as you can see, it's asking us, there are several objects at the multiple heights. If you say no, then this is going to happen. Everything's going to... Yeah, there you can see there's your uh, witch's face all over the ground. So what you actually want to do is when you import this, you want to hit yes. So we can go ahead and delete this. This time we're going to hit yes. And there we go. There is our witch's cauldron. And from here, this is, and this is just very specific to bamboo slicer. From here, you can go object and you can hold shift, click on all of those. And if you right click and you change the filament to blue, it's going to print that in blue for you. Now from here, you can also right click the lid and you can actually just delete the lid because you're going to print the cauldron by itself first. And oh, this is quite interesting as well. So sometimes when you bring in uh, 3MFs or STLs, it's going to ask you this just always say no, because if you say yes, it completely destroys the scale. So we're going to hit no. Yes to multiple parts. There's our cauldron again. And then all you can do is you select all of these right here. You delete it. And there's your lid. Now let's go ahead and slice this. We're going to hit slice. Let's see what we get. Yeah, And as you can see, those details are a little bit too tiny to show up as a uh, multicolor. But I believe if you hit the Tecton wall here and you re-slice that, there we go. Now they're going to show up. But uh, also this is going to take like 100 grams of filament, which is kind of crazy. And if you go back to object here and we turn all of these into just the regular filament, we slice this again. You're going to see it's only 21 grams of filament because there's no color change. Now, if I were to print this multicolor, I would just make it a whole lot bigger. And then you can just print multiples of them at the same time. And you could have something nice you could uh, sell, like, like a little jewelry box, or you could even make the shape a lot taller and it could be a pen holder. It's entirely up to you. But there you have it. That is how you can take a 2D image and turn it into a 3D model and even pimp it up a little bit by using an SVG to put different designs on it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. And if you want to get access to this model and watch our other tutorials, go check out our Patreon. Have a great day.